Today, we're going to be talking about getting readers on that roller coaster suspense in your book, because what we're going to do is we're going to set the pacing by focusing on creating some mini little cliffhangers. So some people call those chapter transitions to hook the reader in into reading the next chapter and then the next chapter and the next chapter. And that's what we're going to do for your writing. We're going to give you these tricks so then you can get your readers staying up all night reading your book. So we're actually going to dive into a T.J. Newman book, Falling. She was actually a stewardess that wrote a book on airplane hijacking. <laughs> she did it in her breaks. And I find it's kind of a master class on building suspense, especially the first few chapters. So we're going to take some live examples from her book, break it down about why it was such a good hook. And then I'm going to give you three tips that all authors should know. So let's read the first chapter. His mind flashed to the image of Carrie's look of disappointment as he walked out of the kitchen. He blinked, glancing away to fall plain as it took off. Now, what I love about that is because in the prologue, she sets up the dream sequence of a plane crash. At the end of chapter one, she sets the stage by getting the reader to focus on the plane going up in the air. So now I'm starting to feel a little bit of suspense. Is that dream real? Is it going to happen with that plane taking off? So that's a nice way for an unfinished motion to get me wanting to read to the next chapter. So with chapter two, Bill, the pilot, learns that his wife has been hijacked. Now this is where it ends in that chapter. Another email hit the box. Put on your headphones. With that, an incoming FaceTime call popped on the screen. What I love about that is this unfinished action. We know there's a FaceTime call coming we want to know what that call is because it's about the hijackers. So then as a reader, I'm not going to put the book down and say, you know what, I can read it later. I want to read to the next chapter. So what she's doing, though, is getting that pacing up and getting you interested again in the book. And the end of the third chapter, he needed help. His family needed help. He couldn't do this alone. Joe, he whispered, we have a situation. Here is a great example of unfinished dialogue as that hook, that mini little cliffhanger. You know when someone says we have a situation, they're not going to be telling you something that isn't serious. So then as a reader, I'm going to have to actually read the next chapter in order to figure that out. So now out of these first three chapters, I'm getting hooked to dive into the reading and allows the author to create more character arc or story or put more details of the plot or the descriptions or the characters. So then the reader starts to empathize and invest. When authors step on the gas and keep pacing up to the end, it actually hurts the book because the reader actually gets bored of that. To feel the high points, they need to get low points. Now, if you're at that high excitement level through the entire book, you kind of normalize it and you want to keep them on their toes on that roller coaster. And the end of chapter four, she doesn't actually use a hook, which is good because you don't want to do this all the time. Because again, once the reader starts recognizing, oh, every chapter is going to have a mini cliffhanger, they'll get bored and put it down. So you want to keep the reader guessing of where these mini cliffhangers will be. But also, too, you don't want to leave too much space in between. That is just regular story and the pacing flattens. This is that little hook at the end of chapter five. She needed to tell them in person. Grab Keely and come up here. We need to talk. So you know, again, if someone says we need to talk, it's going to be important. And I'm going to have to read the next chapter. So that's another key element of what you can do in pacing, is you can allow each character introduction to advance the plot and pacing. But then you also use these little hooks at the end, whether through unfinished dialogue, action, or motion, to get the reader invested and want to read more. So as an author of thrillers, I love <laughs> these comments from reviewers. When they say, I stayed up all night, I couldn't put it down. And that's what we're talking about here. How to create mini cliffhangers, those little hooks at the chapter transitions to get the reader to keep reading. And I find that the end of chapters in suspense and thriller novels is equally, if not more so important than the first part of the chapter. Because if you do the end of the previous chapter well, I'm going to dive into that full chapter to figure out what... <laughs> that unfinished dialogue, action, and emotion was all about. And that's a way to actually pull the reader into your story, and by then they're invested. So that's why I'm saying you don't have to use necessary mini cliffhangers throughout the entire book. 
but just at key points to get that reader moving step by step with you as you're advancing the plot and building character, but adding the tension and the excitement by just by those three little tips that a lot of thriller and suspense authors use. And it's a cool way to get people reading. And now we need to talk about more writing tips at our next video. So if you like that mini cliffhanger, <laughs> go check out the next video, click subscribe and then like, and we'll talk soon with those tips, I promise. <laughs>